Hey there, everybody. Jimmy with To The Top Crane. So, uh, I did a crane reeving video, uh, for those that haven't seen it, but did a crane reeving video down here in the old crane cave. Drew some pictures on a whiteboard and whatnot. And that uh, led to some more questions. And really the only way to uh, cover one of these questions is another video. So, uh, one of the subscribers asked, good job of keeping it simple. I do have a question for you to explain in, future, in a future video. Why does the boom extend in almost whole sections, i.e. 93% for the first couple, rather than three or four sections at 50%? Wouldn't there be less deflection this way? So... There would indeed be less deflection uh, in certain situations. However, I'm going to use the old die cast to maybe demonstrate some of this. I've taken the jib off of it, retracted all the sections to, I'm going to say roughly 50%. And I'm going to try to explain this as well as I can. We'll see what happens. We'll just wing it. Okay, so with pinning booms, there's actually several different boom configurations, or typically around three different boom configurations for each determined boom length. Meaning that you can have each series of sections in a different combination of uh, lengths. So you might have, uh, for example, on the 180G that I operate, when I'm pulling my counterweights and stuff off the truck and setting them on the on the, the deck of the crane, I will have the boom at 71.9 feet. That gives me the most capacity at the radius I need to pull the counterweight off the back of the dolly. So 71.9 feet on the 180 is section number 5 at 93%. So, the way these sections are numbered, at least on the Tadano, section 5 is the smallest, and then it counts down backwards until you get to the biggest movable section, which is section number 1. So, this is the configuration I typically have it in uh, when I'm setting the crane up. It's 71.9 feet of boom, section number 5 at 93%. Now, I can also get 71.9 feet of boom by configuring it, and these sections are kind of hard to move, like so. So I can have section 5 at 50% and section 4 at 50%. It's actually a little less than 50%, but um, that would give me 71.9 feet of boom length as well. However, it has less capacity at the radius that I need to pull my counterweights off, which is 41.8 feet. The reason why it has less capacity is this section is bigger. As I reach out further, that extra weight has more of an influence on the load chart. And that works progressively as you work through the stack. So, say I have this one at 50%, uh, this one at 50%, and I run my third one at 50%, which is gonna put me right around 100 feet I actually have less capacity to further radius in this configuration because I've got another heavier section involved than if I just did that. So I'm ho I hope I'm not confusing everybody with that. But there's, and also I'll touch on the heavy lift modes and stuff like that. But the further you reach out, if you have your lighter sections at a long, longer length, then that means you have less of your heavier sections involved in the furthest pick or the further pick. Now there are times when you have to have it all out and you're just reaching way out and you know I I do that occasionally as well. But if I'm doing stuff that's kind of in the inter intermediate ranges as far as radius, I have more capacity with the lighter sections out as opposed to having these at 50% and then my heavier sections involved. Now there are times, 
and this is when you're getting into the heavy lift stuff, when you're doing stuff at a moderately close distance, that you have a lot more capacity. And that's actually one of the boom modes that it will put it in. It's section uh, five, four, and three, completely retracted section one, still inside the stationary boom. So what that does is it makes this boom ultra, ultra stiff, makes it extremely strong. By, by way of uh, having these three sections inside of this one, and then this one still inside the stationary boom, it makes the boom very strong. And you use that for heavy picks up close. Now I could achieve this same boom length by just doing the same thing as what I showed earlier, the 71.9 feet. That, but that's not nearly as strong. So I hope that hope that makes sense. And there, I mean, there's you've got five sections. There's a a whole bunch of predetermined boom configurations you can put it in. Now, if I tried to reach way out with, say, these three sections at 50%, and then I put these two sections at 100%, or 98%, and there is a load chart for that, or a boom, boom mode, boom configuration for that in the manual, in the load charts. But as I boom down farther, I'm going to have less capacity at the same radius. Like say, say I was booming down to 125 feet with this configuration. And I, if I'm not mistaken, I think this configuration gives me 151 or 156 or something. Without having the charts in front of me, it's hard to remember it. I mean, the load charts to that crane are like a phone book. But if I try to pick something at 125 feet, I'm going to have less capacity like this because I've got my heavy sections involved. And my lighter sections are retracted, you know, to 50%. And that makes it, it makes it pretty boom heavy once you get it laid down out there a ways. So as opposed to doing this, you, and these are kind of a pain to slide back and forth, would be better off making your 125 foot radius pick with something like that. Where you have your lighter sections extended, heavier sections inside the stationary boom. So both would be the same boom length. However, at 125 feet, this configuration would have more capacity because there's less weight of the boom involved. So hopefully, hopefully that doesn't go over everybody's head. I didn't know really any other way to explain it. Um, so that's what I came up with. Also, while we're talking about this or touching on this, I get this question a lot too. This is going to involve the old dry erase board. And I'm going to draw bigger. Ken Gamble is one of my subscribers that said, hey, you got a bigger board, you can draw bigger. Okay, so this is a very terrible rendition of the carrier. The load charts on the Tadano are 360 degree charts. So that means, and it's 360 degrees. That means that when I look up something in a load chart, it will pick it anywhere around the carrier, regardless of uh, how I'm set up, situated, all that good stuff. Some cranes like our Manatexes, our Manatex 5128s, they have two different charts. And let me erase this. So they have a 360 chart and over the rear. And yeah, I write like a five-year-old too. I, I write like I draw, I guess. So what over the rear means is if you drew a line, so this is the center of your rear outrigger. This is the center of your rear outrigger where the jacks are at. Over the rear means anywhere inside those points. So if you were boomed down Anywhere, actually it's a line drawn right through the center of the outrigger jack cylinder and out. Same thing, both sides. So that's over the rear. Typically on our Manatex 5128s, they'll pick a couple thousand pounds more straight over the rear than they will on a full 360 chart. The reason being is the engine in the carrier acts as counterweight. And also on the boom trucks, typically your center of rotation on the crane is situated further to the rear of the carrier. 
so it uses the whole front of the truck as counterweight as opposed to just the counterweight that's hanging on the back of the crane so that's that's over the rear chart anywhere inside of this area is your over the rear load chart everything else is 360 degrees now on the Tadano it's a 360 chart with all but the heaviest picks which we will probably never do uh, the 400,000 pound capacity the 200 tons is like at an eight foot radius pin straight over the rear so it's like picking something right here i don't know of anything that weighs 400,000 pounds that i can get that close enough to it to pick it up like that unless maybe it was a transformer so we have a 360 degree chart we can pick whatever the load chart says anywhere around the carrier now for a little bit of safety factor sometimes i will back up to a, a pick meaning I will put whatever I'm picking, you know, straight back here somewhere, right behind the crane. The reason being is I know in my head that it, it can use the carrier as extra counterweight. I'm not saying I'm going to put it out of its load chart and I'm not going to make, I won't make a pick that's out of its chart, but it does inherently make the pick safer if you can situate yourself to where you're picking straight over the rear or inside this outrigger span just because of the nature of the design of the crane the way it's designed, it's physically capable of more. That doesn't mean that I'm gonna make it do more, that just means that I have more of a safety margin involved in making the pick. So hopefully uh, more crude drawing and playing with a die cast crane answered some questions. Okay, so one thing I forgot to cover with uh, the old load chart thing, and this goes into kind of reading your load charts. So if we have a load chart here, this is your radius, so zero to a hundred foot radius. There'll be lines in here. And then you'll have another row on this side. And this is gonna be like your different boom lengths and whatnot. So there'll be just a whole bunch of squares with numbers in them. And I mean, we can kind of sketch all this out. I'm not gonna put numbers on all of this. So again, we're going to fifth grade art class or kindergarten art class. Okay, so your load chart's basically a grid. On some cranes, and this is very important that people understand um, this next part, on some cranes there is a bold line on the load chart and typically it will like stair step. And honestly, if you don't know what that bold line means, then I'd mean no disrespect to anybody. But if you don't know what that bold line means, then you don't need to be operating a crane. You shouldn't be in it. So what that bold line is, is Everything above the bold line as far as the chart is limited by the structural capacity of the machine. Meaning if you are in that area and you exceed the, the capacity or exceed the chart, you run the risk of physically breaking the machine before the crane ever decides that it's going to try to tip over. Broken booms, broken turntables, stuff like that. Everything below the bold line is limited by the stability of the machine. So if you're in that part of your load chart and you're picking outside of your chart, meaning say you're rated for, or you're good for 10,000 pounds right here and you're picking 12, then you run the risk of making the machine unstable. So it will actually start to tip over before it breaks itself. Now, a lot of the older cranes were that way. They were, they were limited strictly by stability. And that's where you got the term operating it with your butt. Some people would say, well, you operate a crane with your butt. Well, that's because you're feeling what the crane's doing. A lot of the old friction rigs from the 60s and 70s and even in the 80s and some of the early 90s and whatnot, a lot of the big lattice boom cranes and even some hydraulic cranes, they didn't have the structural capacity aspect of the load chart. They were built so strong that you would run them until you felt the machine starting to tip. That doesn't happen as much anymore, and this is why. Machines are getting lighter and lighter. They're doing more work with less material. Since the advent of computers and AutoCAD and whatnot, they, engineers have it down pretty much to a science of what they can get away with as far as how strong they need to make things to achieve a certain amount of work. So the old way of operating something until you feel it starting to tip is no longer acceptable. And this is why. If you're making a pick, say you're good for 50,000 pounds right here, and you try to pick something that's 70,000, before the crane loses stability, it's probably gonna break itself. You might snap the boom off, you might break the turntable off of, of the ring gear. I mean, who knows where it's gonna fail, but the potential is there that it's gonna break itself in half 
before you ever get the load off the ground. So you'll never feel it start to tip. It'll just break. And there's videos on YouTube of it. So, bold line. Anything on your load chart that's above the bold line is limited by the structural integrity, structural capacity of the machine. Anything below the bold line is limited by the stability of the machine. I thought I should cover that. I know I've got some newer crane operators watching um, and you know some people just like to know that and if I'm flipping through the charts on the 5128 and you guys see that line hopefully that'll answer the question but I, I can't stress that enough I'm probably beating a dead horse on that don't run these modern cranes with your butt use your brain the older cranes they didn't have a computer they, their old motto was when in doubt build it stout and that's what they did you know they, they just made them extremely strong nowadays they're pretty flimsy you can't get away with stuff now like you could 35 40 years ago that also doesn't mean go out and abuse your 35 and 40 year old machines. I'm not saying you can go out and pick way over your load chart with your old machines. You should never pick outside your chart. I mean, that's just the rule of thumb. But I thought while I was talking about charts, I probably better cover that. Um, it may save someone the embarrassment of snapping the boom off their crane when they think that, you know, well, I can make the pick until it starts to tip. Well, not necessarily. The carrier may never move and the, the whole boom may fold up like a taco. So there you have it. And with that, to the top crane is out.